This video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you need a website, then you should definitely check out Squarespace and more on that later. Hey there, I just got the Canon R8 this morning and I'm out here doing a first impressions because whenever I get a new camera, the first thing I have to do is go out and shoot with it. Now this is in no way, shape or form a review because I literally just got the camera this morning. Now I'm pretty excited about this camera and at the same time, a little bit not excited because it has the same sensor as the R6 Mark II, a camera that I've owned since it came out. I've done extensive testing and reviews on that camera and I still own it and I use it pretty regularly. So I don't think there's gonna be a lot of surprises in terms of the image quality and dynamic range. But I have a few questions about the usability, the ergonomics, the overheating, battery life, and stabilization. Now this has a smaller body than the R6 Mark II, which I think will make it a little bit harder in terms of the ergonomics and usability. Also could cause some overheating because it has a smaller size body. We have a smaller battery, so we should have decreased battery life. And the other question, of course, is the stabilization. This does not have in-body image stabilization. It only has electronic stabilization in two different strengths. So let's take it off for a spin and see what this camera looks like. So as I walk down the lake here, let's test out the stabilization. So I'm using the RF 15 to 35, which has stabilization in the lens, which is turned on right now. I'm hand holding the camera just by the lens and I'm not very careful. I'm also walking on a trail and I have very shaky hands just to let you know what you're dealing with here. So as I said earlier, this camera does not have in-body image stabilization, but it has two different levels of electronic stabilization. So right now the electronic stabilization is turned off. So let me turn it on and show you what that looks like. All right, so this is with the stabilization turned on, and there is one level higher than this, which I'll show you in a second. So this does crop in a little bit because it has to do that in order to do the digital stabilization. So hopefully this is a little bit of an improvement. So let's kick it up a notch. All right, so now this is with the enhanced stabilization. So this is the highest level of electronic stabilization that this camera has, along with the lens stabe, of course. So you can see it crops in quite a bit more, but hopefully it's a little bit more stable. Now, I know there was some criticism about this camera not having IBIS, and personally, I wish it did. And there's some people that don't like the IBIS in the Canon cameras because it has those wobbles on the wide end. So you don't have the wobbles anymore because we don't have IBIS in this camera. So this is what you get in the most stable form with this camera. Of course, you get a little bit heavier of a crop, but uh, I don't know. I'd rather have IBIS in this camera just because when I'm doing wildlife and stuff like that, I'd like to have the in-body stabilization because it does work really well in the Canon cameras, but trying to save on money, uh, size and weight and all that kind of stuff. So just want to show you what this camera can do with the stabilization that we have. All right, so down to the lake here and I've come here a bunch of times and usually the shore is like way out there somewhere. <laughs> so we've gotten a lot of rain lately and the water level of the lake is really high. I brought my 100 to 500 out here, hoping I could film some birds, but this spot's not gonna work uh, just because of where the water level is. And usually when it rains a lot and the water level comes up, the birds kind of hang out in different places anyways. So my normal spots are, uh, they have different activity and those sorts of things. Anyways, I'm gonna go try to walk over here and see if I can get next to the lake and talk to you a little bit more about this camera. All right, so I found a spot down by the lake here and it's absolutely a beautiful day. It's like 80, 85 degrees Fahrenheit, nice and sunny. Got a little bit of a breeze down here, which maybe you can hear on the microphone. And uh, I didn't see many birds out here. There's a few cormorants flying around, but nothing crazy. I'm gonna have to come out another time and test out the 100 to 500 with the R8. So again, with the overheating, hasn't been an issue in this day out shooting and vlogging. I've seen between zero and three bars on the overheat meter, 
nothing really past that. I haven't been doing long takes and I've been turning the camera on and off in between takes to try to save on battery. And uh, <laughs> that's because this camera has a small battery and I'm about to burn through my first battery. Now I said earlier on at the beginning of the video that I'm not personally super excited about this camera. And that's just because there's nothing really new with the camera in terms of the sensor, dynamic range, image, all that kind of stuff. But I'm really excited about this camera for a lot of people out there because the price makes this so much more accessible. For $1,500, you can get a full frame Canon mirrorless camera that can shoot 10-bit 422 video up to 60 frames a second without a crop. There aren't any other cameras out there that really do that, and that's pretty special. Now, you have to give up some things for that, and there are some limitations, which I've already mentioned. But I'm excited about it because this, as I said, is gonna be accessible to a lot more people. And for me personally, as long as this camera doesn't overheat running in 4K24, this might have a place in my studio because it can be a great studio camera because I'm not gonna to have to worry about the battery because I can just plug it in. Anyways, I gotta head home, so I'm gonna do that and then process up the footage and we'll talk more about this camera. Now that I'm back home in the studio, I need to take a moment to talk about this video's sponsor, which is Squarespace. If you're a creative, a content creator, or a small business owner, you need a website. Believe me, you really do. I'm really excited to have Squarespace sponsor this video because I've been personally using Squarespace for years. Your website can be as simple as a landing spot for people to find your contact info and social media, but it's also a great way to show off your photos, videos, portfolio, artwork, etc. They even let you host videos directly. There is no need to link a YouTube or Vimeo video and it looks a lot more professional and seamless. It's simple to set up a website with their amazing templates. They make it super easy and anyone can do it pretty quickly. They have lots of other cool stuff like the ability to set up an online store, schedule appointments, or have member areas. You should definitely head over to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Josh Satin to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Link in the description. So first of all, I want to apologize for my voice. <laughs> I just recently got back from my first trip to NAB, and I'm absolutely exhausted. So if you'd like to hear more about that experience of NAB 2023 and my experience going for the first time, Brandon and I and our podcast talk about the whole thing. The podcast is called 16 Stops. If you haven't heard of it yet, I'll leave a link in the description. And the episode that we talk about it, when it is available, I'll leave that link down below as well. In terms of the image quality, like I said during the vlog, it's going to be very similar to the R6 Mark II. We're going to get that crispy and detailed 6K oversampled 4K, 10-bit 422 video, and that vlog was shot entirely in 24 frames per second and C-Log3. I graded everything by hand. If you're curious how I expose and grade C-Log3, I made a detailed video about that. I'll leave that link down below in the description. In terms of the dynamic range, again, this was very similar to the R6 Mark II from what I could see. I didn't directly compare them because it was a first impressions video, but from what I could see and from my experience using the R6 II, they're very similar. Now, it's pretty good, but it's really not as good as the Sony cameras in this, in, you know, just above this price point. And, you know, when you're shooting, you often have to choose the highlights or the shadows a lot of the time. So you either protect the highlights and lower the exposure, and then you get some noise in your shadows or you crush out your shadows, or you raise your exposure to blow your highlights to get a little more information in the shadows. So when I was shooting all of this, I was just saving my highlights, and that's generally how I expose when I'm outside in almost every log profile. All right, so... This is basically what I expected because, again, it has the same sensor as the R6 Mark II. And again, at the price point of this camera at $1,500, I think it's pretty decent. In terms of stabilization, I think the camera did pretty well, kind of what I expected. So in the modern Canon cameras that have IBIS, you can't have the lens stay on and the IBIS off. You have to either have them both on or both off. So there's no way to actually test lens stave with digital stave in those cameras. But I have used the electronic stave with lens stave in cameras like the C70 and the EOS R, and I remember them being pretty good. I think they did pretty well with the lens stave in combination, and you do get a little bit of a crop, but I think it's definitely usable in a lot of situations, especially for like a static shot if you're just holding the camera. But if you're vlogging, I think it was fine. All of that was shot, as I said, with the 15 to 35, but I forgot to mention I was shooting it at 15 millimeters. So you can definitely see the, the width of the frame and also if there was any wobbles in the corners. So I think for a lot of people who were frustrated with that combination where you had to have lens and IBIS on, you don't have IBIS, so you can use lens stable and digital and get it as stable as you'd like. It's not gonna be as good as IBIS system, but again, it is what it is. In terms of battery life, I shot that whole vlog with one of the LPE 17 batteries, the smaller ones that you see in this camera and the RP and probably a few other cameras. So it's not great. I uh, will do some longer tests about how long they run for and all that kind of stuff. I did have a second battery with me, but I didn't need it. But again, that wasn't a very long vlog. In terms of overheating, I think the camera did better than I expected. So as I mentioned, it was 80 to 85 degrees outside and sunny. Now I wasn't leaving the camera full on in the sun. I was sometimes in the shade, sometimes in the sun, and I wasn't doing long record times. There were short clips, and I was shutting the camera down in between clips to try to save battery. 
That being said, in 4K24, I didn't really see it go above two or three bars of that overheating measurement that's on the back of the camera. But what was interesting is when it was in 4K60, I definitely saw it going up higher. Now, I didn't shoot very long in 4K60, but it definitely crept up higher. Now, what was really interesting was when I was in 4K60 and it was showing like five or six bars, when I flipped it over to 4K24, the number of bars dropped immediately. So there's definitely like a different scale or something going on when you're in 24p or 60p. But either way, I think it did better than I expected in 24p, and I will definitely do some long, serious overheating tests and report that to you when I get around to it. Um, I'm really curious about that, both for like studio work and outside and all that kind of stuff, so I will I'll get back to you on that. Lastly, I wanna give a little bit about the ergonomics and give you a little tour around the camera. So it is a small-bodied camera. It is supposedly the same body as the Canon RP, so there are some limitations with that. So first of all, let's look at the front of the camera. You can see that there's really nothing going on besides the lens release here. And we take the cap off here. I can show you the sensor. As you know, it does not have IBIS, so it's a fixed sensor. Also, there is no shutter to close down uh, at shutdown, which is kind of a bummer. So taking a look around the camera, first of all, onto this side here, you can see that it's actually a pretty thin camera, and that's because it does not have IBIS. In terms of the ports, we have, of course, micro HDMI. <laughs> I don't mean, I know we'd expect that here. We have a USB port, we have mic and headphone, and then we also have a uh, remote port. Onto the grip side of the camera, we have pretty much nothing going on here because usually we have the cards to be accessed right here, but there isn't here, it's down below in the bottom. So again, nothing really going on with the grip. In terms of the grip, it's a little bit on the smaller side, but it is a smaller camera. I can hold it pretty well with two fingers, but when you hold it with two fingers, when you have a big lens on it, you'll start to feel it being top heavy and it's kind of awkward. You can definitely get three fingers on here with this with a really tight grip. Of course, you're definitely not gonna get a fourth finger on there, but I just kind of want to show you that <clears throat> it is a, a little bit smaller of a camera, but totally as expected. Okay, onto the bottom. The one thing I want to point out here is the battery compartment because the battery compartment, as I said, has that smaller LPE17 battery. Also, the memory card is down here as well, which is not my favorite, especially when you have it mounted to a tripod or something like that. It is a little bit harder to get the memory card out, but it takes SD cards in the bottom. Onto the top, we have some similarities with the R6 Mark II. We have the photo video switch, which I really like because I pretty much always leave it in video mode. <laughs> onto the right-hand side, we have the power switch, which I actually really like on this side because when you're holding it, it's really easy to flip it on and off. This here is an exposure control. I usually set that to aperture. One thing that's weird about the mode dial is it only has two custom modes for photo and video, which is kind of a weird cripple because the R6 Mark II has three, so but they only gave us two there, so just keep that in mind. You have the record button here. You have another exposure control, which I usually set to, set to shutter speed. You have the MFN, MFN button here, and then also the shutter. So that's what's going on on top of the camera. Now onto the back, it's pretty simple. You don't have a lot going on here. You have no wheel, so no third exposure dial, which is kind of a bummer to me. You just have an up, down, left, right D-pad, and some of the basic can buttons that you'd expect on the back of a camera, no joystick, really a stripped down version. In terms of the EVF and LCD, they were fine. Um, the Canon LCDs are pretty fantastic, in my opinion, a lot better than Sony's, and the EVF was as expected as well. So no real complaints there. I think they are very great for the price of $1,500. I think it's kind of what you expect. So overall, in terms of the build quality, ergonomics, pretty much as you expect, a $1,500 Canon camera, and um, it does sit okay in your hand. I wish it was a little bit bigger. I wish it had a bigger battery, but again, pretty much what you expect. Uh, for this camera. So I will be doing a lot more videos about the R8 and if you have any questions, put them down below and I will try to get to them or incorporate them in a future video. If you're interested in learning about the R8 or lots of other camera stuff, please consider hitting subscribe down below. It'd be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.